All right, Fishaholics. Welcome back to another video. Just got down here to the Jersey Shore. It is about 12 o'clock, and uh, I guess it's been about like two or three weeks since uh, I last fished Jersey from the surf. So I'm intrigued today to see what's gonna happen. Today is November 20th, and it's a little chilly. It's about 38, 40 degrees. And you know, before we start today's fishing mission, for today's video, I partnered up with Exter Wallets, which are a beautifully well-made leather, compact, smart wallet. And I would say over the last like six, seven months, I've really fallen in love with compact wallets and they've definitely found a, a place in my pocket because uh, I can just carry all that stuff I need and not all that junk I don't need in a bulky wallet. And, um, you know, I, I thought I would also be, it would be also cool to offer up some of you guys outside of fishing, something you can use in your everyday life. And being the holidays are like right around the corner, it's crazy how quick they sneak up on us. But, um, you know, I figured this might be a good opportunity for you guys to pick up something for yourself, something for a friend or a loved one. And uh, what's really cool about the Exter, uh, which I've grown to like, because uh, other compact wallets, I've struggled to get my cards out sometimes. There's a nice little lever on the Exter wallet, which you can just press lightly and your cards slide up right in line. You can pull out the cards you want, make a transaction, and just put it right back in there. Push it right back down. And it's in there nice and snug. So uh, it's pretty sweet. And also, if you're someone who <laughs> loses your wallet, uh, this guy, or uh, you know, even loses your phone, Exter also has a cool little GPS tracker which is about the size of a debit card, which is crazy, and it's solar powered. And uh, with the Chipolo app, you can connect it to your phone, and you connect your phone to the GPS tracker. So if you lose your wallet, you can use your phone to find the wallet, and then get this, you can actually use your, the wallet to find your phone, which uh, I've lost my phone and my wallet, so this is definitely gonna play a critical role to save me some time if I ever lose it in the future, which I always tell myself I'm not gonna lose my wallet or my phone in the future, but just like, Sometimes just life catches up with you and you're, you're moving faster than your mind can think and that's how you misplace and lose things. And uh, anyway, that's about it. Now, let's get out there and catch some stripers. All right, well, this water is looking pretty good. Uh, it's a little dirty though because the last couple days we had a lot of rain and quite a bit of wind. So this water is probably just cleaning itself up. All right, well, since the water is still a little murky, we'll start out with a white. Fishaholic Finback Shad on, I believe, a one and a quarter or one ounce SNS Fishaholic Jig Head. Something with some high viz. And this water's still at a higher water level because it's just about the start of the outgoing tide. So this could be good. There could be fish pushed up right at our feet. Now all we gotta do is find them. All right, so since we haven't fished this stretch of beach since I think May, uh, we're gonna try and stay pretty mobile. Take a cast, retrieve it in, and then you know take 10 steps, take another cast, and just keep working our way down the beach until we get a bite or see some signs of bait, signs of life, and then uh, we'll work the area harder once uh, we find one of those three things. Water looks a lot chocolatier, like right along this area, and then down about a quarter mile, looks like it cleans up a bit. So that might be a better spot for some potential, but we're still gonna fish this thoroughly because you never know, there could be some nice fish hiding out in this dirty water, looking for something to eat. I might fish it a little bit slower though, and right near the sand, because typically when the water's dirty, these fish are gonna be sitting right near the structure, and when you're fishing a beach, the structure is the bottom. All right, it's been about 20, 30 minutes. No bite on the shad, so we're gonna switch. I'm gonna try this bomber long shot. Haven't seen any signs of bait yet, but uh, we already tried a small presentation, now we're gonna try a larger presentation. I just fished the bomber for about 20, 30 minutes. No bites. Try a diamond jig to get some more distance, cover some more water. And there could be some sand eels here that we're just not seeing. 
All right, I took the diamond jig off, fished that for about 30 minutes, and I had like one bite, but uh, I wasn't filming. I turned off the camera a little bit to save some battery. So uh, we're gonna switch now to an olive over white and silver flake, fishaholic shad. And the water is a little bit cleaner towards this end of the beach. Just like I said, like way back there, it's dirtier and muddier, but right here, water looks a lot cleaner. So we're gonna try a more natural color. Just had a bite, second cast. Oh, getting hit. Come on back, come on back. Oh, there's a fish right there at the lip. Oh, he's going crazy. <laughs> yeah. I surprised him, he surprised me. All right. Decent, chunky schoolie. Didn't take long after switching to the natural colored fishaholic finback shad and also once we started fishing some cleaner water. Look at that beautiful fish. Sweet. Glad he wasn't like a super dink. <laughs> Oh, there's another one. Oh man, what is this? This is a super dank, oh my gosh. That's so tiny. Fish number two, or it's like half a fish. All right, well, pretty sweet. We can check off getting skunked for today. And uh, it's about 2.15, and I think we started fishing a little after 12 o'clock and uh, about a quarter mile back that way. So it took us about two hours to finally get two fish in the last 10 minutes, which is pretty sweet. We caught them right in the same spot, right along the lip where it first drops off. So I'm gonna learn a lot from that. And uh, I think uh, we'll give it like another hour or so. The sun's getting low already in the sky. And uh, if we can catch hopefully some more stripers like the size of that first one we caught, we'll definitely hang out and fish in the dusk, in the dark possibly. But uh, we might just uh, switch up to a larger presentation and I'm thinking as it gets later, possibly some bigger fish could be doing just what the smaller fish are doing, but cruising along that lip and they might be a little bit bigger. And obviously if we throw out something larger, we could weed out uh, some of the smaller fish. But uh, for now, uh, we'll make the most of the rest of the daylight we have and keep on chucking this fishaholic fin back, see if we can get some, some more fish. All right, well, I'm getting a bunch of bites on the amber over white and silver flake, but it looks like the water's getting a little bit more murked up. Probably uh, just because of the time and the other tide. Let's try a Wonder Bread, something a little brighter. Might stand out a little better. There's a fish. Wonder Bread, got it done. All right, it's like the second biggest one. It took about 30 more minutes to get this extra bite. All right, I've actually started to kind of work my way back a little bit because where we caught those two fish, it slowed down, didn't really get any uh, fish. So I started working my way back and 30 minutes later, just caught that one. Try it again. I sunk that all the way down to the bottom and I actually was just letting it sit there and then I started the retrieve and a few turns of the reel, as soon as I brought it off the bottom, that fish crushed it. <sighs> oh, another one, doing the same thing. Popped it right off the sand. This fish crushed it. Ah, oh, I lost him. He just popped off. 
Try that same cast again though. So my shad is laying on the sand right now. I'm just gonna pop it right off the sand. There he is. Boom. That's a good way to show you that they're sitting right on the bottom, right near the structure. When this water gets murked up, that's what they like to do. Oh, that is such a gorgeous. All right, so we just caught that fourth one and then my GoPro camera died. But uh, it wasn't anything too crazy, about the same size as our first fish. But uh, we did have two of those bites back to back real quick. So uh, just took about five minutes to change out the GoPro battery. Now we're gonna get back out there, see if we can uh, get back on that bite. Cause that was definitely the best consistent action and consistent, consistent biting action that I've had uh, today. You know, getting two bites like back to back casts like that. All right, let's see if those fish are still hanging out here. They probably just swim up and down the beach. And uh, you know, once you start getting bites, you, you really gotta try and catch them as quick as possible before say they move down a little bit and then you gotta wait for another group of fish or the same group of fish to come back through. Oh, there's another one. Just, just like dragging it on the sand and the fish crushed it. It's so awesome. All right, let's get back out there quick, see if we can get another one before they move. Nice little pile of fish here, boys, yeah. Also, at least the fish I'm catching on the Wonder Bread Shad are uh, out at the end of the cast there. See you later, bud, there he goes. Because at least then we get a little bit of a fight out of these fish. First two we caught were like right at the lip real close in. It's like, yeah, you, know, you hook them and then it's like, boom, second later they're on the beach. That one crushed it right at the lip. <laughs> Go figure, just after I say like, I'm enjoying catching them way out there. And then this fish crushes it right there. All right, now we're talking. And go figure the biggest one of the day so far, right on the edge of the lip. That's a nice chunk on the Wonder Bread. Heck yeah. All I gotta say is we're definitely probably staying here until it gets dark. <laughs> They're turning on a little bit for sure. The bite is on. This is a little fatty. You're eating well, bud, right? Huh? Jeez, it's amazing how cold it gets uh, this time of year. As soon as that sun goes down, it's like phew, the temperatures plummet. And we're back in the car, and you know, total fishing mission accomplished for today. Um, stoked we came down here and pretty much did what I was hoping was gonna like what we were gonna do. Uh, you know, I was also thinking it was gonna go down in three ways today. It was either we we're gonna come down, struggle to catch any any fish, or catch maybe one or two. Uh, or we were gonna get on a nice little bite, which we did, or it was gonna be absolute pandemonium and we were gonna get on blitz and fish. So it was sweet that we landed right in the middle there. And when we first started, I was also getting discouraged just because of how chocolatey the water was. And then we worked our way down to the beach, found cleaner water, caught those two fish right away on the natural fishaholic shad. And uh, then it slowed down a little bit because I think as that tide started to drop and get lower, uh, some of the runoff that was coming down the tributaries and running into the bay and then eventually into the ocean murked up the water a little bit because I think like yesterday or the day before it rained pretty hard, it rained all day. So just 
by that uh, change in water coloration, uh, those fish needed something that was a little bit more vibrant and stood out to them a little bit better. And that's where the Fishaholic Wonderbread Shad uh, played a major role in today's bite. So uh, it was pretty awesome. You know, these baits, uh, and I'm not just saying this, have been like the mainstay for me this entire season. I've been catching a ton of fish on these. And it's also been awesome seeing some of you guys posting uh, some cool pictures and tagging me in some of your stuff on Instagram of uh, what you're catching. And it's always really awesome to see. So I'll put my Instagram down in the description uh, if you guys want to follow along. It's it's a good way to stay up to date of like what I'm catching like day to day rather than uh, just keeping up to date with what I'm posting on YouTube because by the time like you see this video it'll probably already be a few days maybe even a week after this is already being filmed but um, yeah totally sweet I'll put the links down in the description for this and uh, I'll put all my tackle and equipment down there you know the deal and if you could also help support the channel by picking up a beanie or uh, check in out my Teespring Fishaholic Peril page that'd be absolutely amazing and uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. So I'll see you guys out on the water. I'll see you in the next video. But like always, never forget, live to fish, fish to live.